2024 has not been a good year for climate change. From natural disasters to carbon sinks weakening to election outcomes, our planet has seen better times. But it's not all bad news. This year we saw some incredibly important progress in renewable energy and biodiversity protection that easily gets overlooked in the flurry of negative stories. So where do we stand? I present to you the State of the Climate 2024, a brief look at some of the worst and best climate change updates of the year. And if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button to support the channel and climate science on YouTube. This was a loaded chaotic year, so let's not waste any more time and jump right into it. Let's start with the basics. Unsurprisingly, 2024 set another record for atmospheric CO2 levels, with May concentrations hitting 426.9 parts per million. The same was true with methane emissions, an often overlooked but major contributor to global climate change, hitting record high levels at 1,921 parts per billion. While a lot of this methane comes from humans, whether it's from gas pipelines, landfills, or rice paddies, it seems like a big chunk of recent emissions are coming from microbes in the soil and water. But why? One reason may be because a warmer climate is breaking down Earth's natural carbon sinks, as highlighted this year by The Guardian. There are a myriad of ways in which Earth's ecosystems pull CO2 gas from the atmosphere and store it in a solid form. Whether it's photosynthesis in trees, organic matter in the soil, or sinking plankton in the ocean, all these natural processes have been cleaning up parts of our carbon emissions. However, under warmer temperatures, trees are more prone to forest fires, soil is exposed to droughts that strip their carbon, and plankton communities are changing, making these processes less effective. A significant chunk of the CO2 and methane increases we saw this year were caused by the cracks in these systems. This understandably freaked a lot of people out. Another reason our carbon sinks slowed down this year was due to El Nino in the Pacific Ocean. This cyclical pattern leads to warmer surface temperatures in the Pacific, which can exacerbate a warmer climate and lead to less effective ecosystem services. It's also part of the reason why 2024 was the hottest year ever recorded, with temperatures 1.54 plus or minus 0.13 C above pre-industrial levels. Does this mean that we have passed the 1.5 degree C threshold the world has been fighting so hard to avoid crossing? Not quite. The 1.5 degree C limit refers to long-term global average temperatures, which are so far still below this limit. However, on our current track, we will most likely blow past 1.5 degrees C sometime this decade. While this doesn't spell doomsday for humanity, it will ramp up the likelihood and severity of extreme weather like what we saw in 2024. This May, Brazil saw 90% of the state of Rio Grande do Sul flooded with rain, killing hundreds and displacing tens of thousands of people. While disasters like this are more common under El Nino, climate models were able to separate the effects of long-term warming and found that climate change made this disaster more than twice as likely. Click the link below if you want to read more. Spain also fell victim to extreme flooding this November, with hundreds dying in some of the worst floods Europe has seen this century. The city of Valencia got a year's worth of rain in only eight hours. Heat waves gripped much of Western and Southern Asia this April, causing record-breaking 50 degrees C temperatures in India. Southern Africa saw 68 million people impacted by droughts caused by the combined effect of El Nino and climate change on top of one another. And lastly, the United States saw massive damage in the wakes of Hurricane Beryl, Debbie, Francine, Milton, and Helene, the last of which caused roughly $250 billion in damages and took the lives of over 200 people, making it the second deadliest hurricane to hit the US. Despite this, the American people have still elected Congress members and presidents for the coming year who do not believe in or understand climate science. This election had massive impacts on the future of climate change policy on both a domestic and international level. At COP29, the 29th annual climate change conference held in Baku, Azerbaijan, Trump's election led to hesitation and uncertainty in financing the path to a carbon neutral economy. Many nations showed signs of cold feet on a renewable transition. It is clearly unacceptable as it stands now. With Argentina entirely withdrawing under the leadership of right-wing populist Javier Milei. Not to mention, the host nation of Azerbaijan is the third petrol state in a row to host COP after the UAE and Egypt, claiming that oil and gas are a gift of God at one of the opening discussions. It's a gift of the God, every natural resource. Needless to say, there is still an enormous amount of work to be done. 
Humanity has spent the last 200 years fundamentally changing our atmosphere and climate in ways that Homo sapiens has never encountered before. We are rapidly moving into uncharted territory, but that doesn't mean no one is trying to stop it. While it's true that a lot of climate news looked bleak this year, it would be a disservice to pretend like 2024 was nothing but bad stories. What can we be hopeful about moving forward? Well, for starters, the UK straight up banned coal this year, closing their last coal power plant in October. This is coming from the nation that began the Industrial Revolution and jump-started climate change to begin with. Now, they are a leader in the fight against fossil fuels, going from 39% of electricity coming from coal in 2012 to 0% in 2024. But they aren't the only European country making progress. This April, Portugal saw 95% of their electricity needs coming from renewable sources, with an average of 91% the preceding months. Wind and solar have now overtaken fossil fuel energy in 12 other EU nations, with Austria, Belgium, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Hungary, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Spain, the Netherlands, and Sweden joining with Portugal this year. This is the beginning of a rapid transition to renewable energy, much to the chagrin of fossil fuel lobbyists who are slowly losing ground. Globally, renewable energy now makes up over 30% of humanity's total demand, with last year seeing the fastest growth in renewables in the past two decades. We are living in the midst of an energy revolution, a long overdue shift from resource, environmental, and human exploitation to a cleaner, safer, more stable, and equal means of producing electricity. But wait, there's more! Colombia, a nation that holds roughly 10% of the Amazon rainforest, saw deforestation drop 36% to the lowest level in 23 years. This coincided perfectly with the Biodiversity COP16, different from the one held in Azerbaijan this year. Here, important agreements were made with the goal of protecting 30% of the Earth's ecosystems by 2030. Side note, the 2024 Paris Olympics were designed with the goal of halving the carbon emissions produced by the Rio and London Olympics of 2016 and 2012. Critics had mixed feelings about the decisions made, especially with regards to carbon offsets, the shift to more sustainable construction, more plant-based meals, public transportation, and recycled materials could put the footprint of the Paris Olympics 2 million metric tons lower than London or Rio. Finally, 2024 is most likely the end of 2023's El Nino season, and the beginning of a La Nina period. La Nina brings cooler, wetter temperatures to parts of the tropics, making it easier for these systems to pull carbon dioxide out of our atmosphere. El Nino does the opposite, which is why we saw our natural carbon sinks falter this year, prompting the release of the aforementioned Guardian article. If you're interested in reading a rebuttal to this article, check out the link down below. Even with all these positive stories, we are still so very far from living in a sustainable world. 2024 saw the election of more climate change deniers to powerful government positions, more stalling on climate finance, and more natural disasters disproportionately impacting the poorest citizens of planet Earth. If we want to reach a carbon neutral world, it will require all of us to be on the same page, understanding the warnings of climate scientists acting cooperatively on common ground policies, and using the tools we have today to build a more sustainable tomorrow. Climate change is here, and it is our duty to correct the mistakes of the past and work collectively as homo sapiens to solve the largest global problem we have ever encountered. Well, that's all I've got for you this year. Thanks for watching the 2024 State of the Climate, and let's all keep working together to continue the progress we've made over the last year. As always, all the sources are linked down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to support Planet Zero. Happy New Year, YouTube!